Hi, in this video we will take a look at how we can use R to do correlation and understand how correlation and uh, visualization works within some of the libraries in R. Uh, correlation is basically a statistical technique uh, using which we can understand how different uh, variables uh, are related basically and uh, gives us an idea in terms of uh, how strongly related or if there's a weak relationship or no relationship at all. Um, and this is helpful in many ways. So uh, take for example the classic examples of um, height and uh, weight. Uh, so we are all aware that uh, you know people who are taller weigh more. So that's a given. Um, but uh, in some cases we can use these uh, strongly related uh, relationships if you will. Uh, to detect uh, anomalies or even outliers. So that's uh, one of the things that uh, correlation can be used for. Uh, in today's uh, demo and examples, uh, we'll take a look at a couple of different data sets and see the various uh, visualization capabilities that we have in R. Uh, so to get started, I've, um, I've got uh, R Studio here and I've uh, pre-typed in uh, some code. Um, so I'm going to use the popular Iris data set and uh, also one of the Cars data sets. Um, but first we'll start off with uh, the Iris data set. Um, so uh, since I don't want to keep typing it many many times and I'm switching between data sets, uh, I'm going to use a shorthand here. So I, I put that in the D variable. Um, so um, let's take a look at that data set. So if you've not already seen what um, uh, the data set looks like it's basically uh, the iris data set contains uh, 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 I think about yeah, 150 observations um, which has uh, details of the length with uh, of uh, petals and sepals uh, across different flower species so again you don't have to be a biology student uh, but one of the interesting things that uh, of course R can be used for is even if you don't have a domain understanding we can use data and analytics to actually uncover the uh, the domain and that's one of the key strengths of R. Um, so before we do any kind of analysis it's always a good idea just to uh, do a quick plot of the data. Um, so here's a, um, the actual data set itself and visually we can already start seeing uh, if there are any strong relationships uh, across different variables here. Uh, so if you have not used uh, plot before Basically, it's plotting every variable against the other. So in this particular instance, it's plotting uh, sepal length against sepal width. And here we have uh, sepal length against petal length. So that's typically how this works. Uh, and visually, we, uh, through visual inspection, we can quickly get a glimpse of some of the things that we may not want to consider as part of this data set. Um, so I'm going to remove that from the data set. So fundamentally, I've, um, I'm going to exclude all uh, uh, um, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to include everything but the last uh, column. Alright, so now if I plot it, uh, basically it's only these four. Um, so doing correlation is very easy. Just um, use this command here, correlation. If you don't provide any uh, parameter for the method, by default it uses the Pearson's correlation. Um, so here's an example of the output. And what it really means is that um, if... Um, the relationship is very strong, uh, it will be uh, closer to a positive one. If uh, the relationship is inverse, that basically means if something, if one variable increases, uh, results in the other variable decreasing, that's a negative relationship. And uh, anything closer to zero would basically imply that it's not related at all. So one does not really influence the other. Uh, so here we can see in a quick matrix uh, that relationship across different variables, across uh, different observations. Uh, we of course could have used uh, different algorithms like here for example if you use uh, Kendall and uh, here for example if you use uh, Spearman. Uh, you can see across the different outputs uh, the relationship basically remains fairly consistent. Again based on your requirement you might use uh, one algorithm or the other. Uh, if, for instance, you only wanted to test um, or understand the relationship between any two uh, variables, then you can actually use the correlation test function. So again, it, uh, you, uh, instead of giving a matrix, it basically gives you um, the relationship uh, between these two variables. Uh, moving on, um, let me run that. 
So this is a, a, as much it takes for us to kind of like understand how correlation works, but sometimes it's helpful to uh, visually understand the data and for that we can use uh, a very handy library which you will have to install uh, before using uh, to do some plotting. So let's um, reference that library. And here it's basically as you can see on the right hand side it's uh, it's the same data but uh, available in a much more visual way. So again um, it's a matrix across different variables so uh, anything that's across this diagonal you can basically ignore because it's uh, again um, the correlation between sepal length and itself or the variable and itself. Um, so again similar to um, understanding the data here so um, anything that's uh, in blue is um, highly correlated anything that's in red is um, as you can see from this legend here anything that's uh, in red or closer to red is inversely uh, correlated and if it's uh, you know white um, it basically means that it's closer to zero there's really no strong relationship so this is one quick way that we can visualize it uh, but it's not just through this a uh, couple of different ways that uh, we can visualize it and if you don't uh, provide a parameter for the method it assumes circle by default um, so here we have a couple of different ways um, so in this particular instance it's a pie chart uh, we can view it as a matrix of different colors um, or actually the numbers itself and this is quite handy because in a single view it uh, gives us both the number as well as um, the uh, correlation uh, through colors so this is quite handy in my opinion um, and again if uh, this seems like a lot of noise and you either prefer to uh, see only one part of that uh, puzzle if you will either the lower part or the upper part uh, you can basically configure that Again, this was an example where we had a very small data set, uh, not a lot of uh, variables there. Uh, but on the other hand, if we take a slightly larger data set like uh, this cars data set, I'm going to change it from iris uh, to using um, the cars data set. Um, so the cars data set, you can see it uh, contains uh, quite many other number of variables here. So again, it uh, allows for us to uh, understand uh, the relationships and uh, do some analysis across a much larger data set so this is really where correlation is helpful um, and as you can see in a very visual way we can quickly get a grasp of how uh, different variables uh, impact or does not impact uh, the other so as a quick example yeah, we can see this uh, variable vs has a negative uh, relationship with uh, hp um, so you can visually inspect that right here so an example which is typically used is um, let's say for example it's, a, it's in the stock market um, and you have um, say the S&P 500 and you have say Apple, Google, IBM, uh, Microsoft and various other stock symbols and you can see the core relationship over a period of time and if at any given point in time uh, there's a disconnect between today's correlation and maybe historic correlation uh, that's an opportunity to take some action or it shows uh, something that's uh, out of the ordinary or out of the standard deviation for example and um, it's quite handy to use correlation in many many different ways uh, so again this was just a quick overview of correlation uh, we'll deep dive into other machine learning and other more statistical analysis uh, using R in future videos. Thanks everyone for watching.